prosperity and freedom never start the fight. That's why we can't preemptively go attack countries and claim it's for some greater good because that violates God's law to not start a fight. Then we end up losing the moral high ground and we're being maneuvered by the globalist towards destabilization. That's what this is all about. Let's go back to your phone calls. Robert in Kentucky, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I do appreciate it. I just wanted to, uh, uh, with all the police state news that's going on around, every time I hear somebody talk about it, they always start with the same opening statement. Not all police are bad. But, I mean, every day it's a new story. What well, was it uh, this weekend, uh, the cop that was the serial rapist? You know, uh, when they line these cops up to go on riot patrol or put people down, they don't say, look, all these protesters, 90% are good, there's only 10% bad. No, man, they, you know, remember the video where they shot the lady with the rubber bullet through the sign? They're all high-fiving. Every time you put that hesitation, it all, uh, well, there's some, most cops are good. You know, hey, they might be, but where are they? I see no videos. I, you know, I hear them. I don't hear any of them coming out. Oh, well, they might lose their job. Well, if you choose money over doing what's right, then you're just as bad as the evil. I mean, if they want to step up, take a stand, say, I'm a cop, but I don't agree with any of this, come out publicly, do it. Great. They're the good guy. But as long as they, you, <laughs> let's go to Star Wars, man. <laughs> you can't be part of the rebellion and serve the empire. It's impossible. I hear what you're saying, and if you tuned into my show 10 years ago, you would hear me just yelling and screaming about the police being uh, authoritarian thugs and being militarized and predicting everything that would come. I know it better than anybody. What I'm saying is it has been federalization, federal standards, and federal training that have brought us to this point, the militarization, the us against them mentality. But you also have the degeneration of the general public and so that's another big manifestation that you're seeing inside of the police departments as well. And so we'll get a lot further with the police pointing this out from an outside the box spectrum than trying to debate it from within either cops are good or cops are bad. We have a system where the establishment is preparing the country for collapse. And out of that collapse, they will bring the new social order which I like to use George Orwell's term, is a oligarchical collectivism or a tiny elite using collectivism to enslave and control the public, a new royalty. Because what is serfdom? It's a form of collectivism for the general public with the elite exempt. <clears throat> All over the world, they've militarized police. All over the world, they've gone after free speech. All over the world, they're censoring the internet. All over the world, it's a global standardized program and they intend for us to have clashes with the police. So they give the police the training and the missions that will make the public hate them. They tell the police, attack the press, and then lie about it. And then they begin to be seen as an occupying enemy. So I'm here just explaining the whole narrative. <clears throat> Separately, I've had police send me some of the best info we've gotten over the years, both federal and local local from different parts of the country. I have had military give us some of the best information. The military is the most awake group out there, period. There's not even any yardstick. So as bad as the military's mission is with its leadership, it's the most awake good group because they're so close to it. Secondarily, the most awake group that I've seen and I've witnessed, not just myself or from others, is police. So it's a paradox. It's, it's, it, 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 it's an oxymoron because they know I'm not lying because they're in the middle of it. And it's always like that. Why do you think Hitler went after the police and military when he first got in to make sure he had it all in line? Why do you think the Soviets did that or the communists in, in China or, or, the, or, or uh, other totalitarians? Or every time there was a coup in Rome, they would wipe out the whole group under them. I'm communicating to the police that I believe they're smart enough to understand this and decompartmentalize and understand that they will be thrown away once this thing comes into place. 
and to let them see how the globalists are manipulating it. If we just come out and say we're in a police state, I mean, I'm, I'm Mr. Police State, folks. I'm known for exposing it. I made four films on it. It then plays into the us against them psychology. But if we look at the big picture, it will change all of that. Uh, another problem is society is in a depression. We now have cell phones and cameras. So we're seeing things bad cops have been doing forever. We're now just learning about it. So it's a perception uh, that it's getting worse. I mean, I think it's gotten worse in some ways, better in some others. Cities vary. Some cities, the police are just unbelievably uh, corrupt. The public's scared of them. They don't care. Other cities, uh, they're more, you know, Mayberry RFD. It's just that as the police go and as the military goes, so much of the will the country and the world go. And I do see, I mean, look, the problem is cities coming out with microphones under federal grants listening to people. Do we blame the cops for that? Do we blame the cops for having an ordinance against skateboarding down the sidewalk so they arrest people? No, you should change the law. People, when I'm at Barton Springs, say, Alex, get, you know, the cops are here writing us tickets for our dogs off a leash. They are sent there by the Barton Springs management, the aquatics department. I checked into it. They go and complain to the city to tell the police chief, to tell the captain that Barton Springs doesn't want competition with people using the free part of the springs. And so the city is sending cops who look like they hate their job to write people tickets for their dogs off a leash. We should change the ordinance and designate that an off-the-leash park. So when I'm there once a week or something with my kids, people, when I walk by, Alex, Alex, through the fence, because I'll be in the paid part. I don't have my dogs with me and because I want to swim laps. It's deeper. And they'll say, do something, do something. They're here writing these tickets every day. They're harassing everybody. And I said, you need to go to the city council. You need to make an issue out of this and have this declared a dog park. The greedy, evil city council and the people running the aquatics department, who aren't even bad themselves, a bunch of them are listeners, they are literally, government sees the free area of, of the Barton Creek uh, spring coming out in, into the Colorado River, they call Lady Bird Lake. They see that as, a, as something they don't control. I mean, for years... They wouldn't let you swim in the in the lazy Colorado River, which is great swimming from the dam down. Even though you, if you lived in a house past that, you could swim in the lake. There was no danger, no problem. I've had cops sit there and say, hey, I'm going to write you a ticket for swimming. And I just go, oh, come on. You know there's nothing wrong with this lake. I'm, I'm you know, uh, this river. I'm here swimming. Uh, and uh, I'll laugh at them and say, if you really want to have a big circus, go get a dive team and fish me out. And then they walk off because they just want to go write tickets to somebody else. Now, if I challenged them and said, you can't catch me on the gingerbread man, they'd probably go get a helicopter or something. But just laughing at them saying, come on, man. You know what people complained? They've now designated areas as swimming areas on the river. So it's us demanding, us not playing games, us not going along with the fluoride in the water or any of it. Austin will have the fluoride out of it when we start suing every city council member that's against it. When we stop playing Mr. Nice Guy, when we go, oh, you add a chemical bought from a Florida company that has hundreds of other compounds in it, so you're not just putting fluoride in our water that Harvard says gives us cancer and brain damage. You're putting other stuff in it in violation of the law. You have to clean it before it goes, but then at the last stage you put this in and you claim some federal mandate waiver, we're going to sue you. I can't do all the fighting. That's what I tell people. I can't go down to the city council and wage some crusade or jihad for two years to make them make this a dog park and let you have your dogs off the leash and stick signs there. It's been a dog park since I was three years old down there visiting my grandparents. Okay, it should be a dog park. The damn, excuse me, the city of Austin should stop it. But it is a microcosm of the whole thing. But do I just go, oh, there's the cops. I hate them now. No, it doesn't do anything. And does that mean I'm perfect? One day I saw the cops down there when it rained a bunch earlier in the year. This was last year now. On the Barton Creek Trail, 
and people were down there with their kayaks, and the city had put some swimming ban on there from two weeks before when it flooded. There was no flooding. It was crystal clear. They had cops down there in mass, I guess, to make money, just writing tickets to people that were kayaking or swimming. And I was just going to throw up. I said, you're disgusting. And I basically said, write me a ticket, and I was jumping in the water, and they wouldn't give me one. So I get why you're angry, but we need to change it, not just complain about it. Burning down some business doesn't change it. We need to change it every day. I'm sorry, I got a lot of callers to go to. I'm ranting, Robert. But is that, I mean, wh what do you say to that? Um, I, man, I agree with you. Like I said, I've never agreed to call in business, but it's it almost like jury nullification. What would change the law faster? Everybody voting or a police force with common sense saying, look, we're not stealing people's money, writing tickets for swimming. Which would change that law faster? It's, no, you're right. The police forces not writing tickets, and they go, well, it's the law. They knew people didn't go check with the city that they weren't supposed to be swimming in the creek. And the cops should have shown up the first day if they care when it was flooding.